Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. If you're like me and you enjoy your Chevy Nova or any muscle car for that matter, there's nothing you enjoy more than driving it around and having a lot of fun in it. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to make that fun even better. Let's talk about things you can modify on your Chevy Nova to make everything better. Now, a lot of you guys, you go out and buy the perfect car, um, but most of us, I think, go out and buy something hoping to build the perfect car, or at least modify it enough to make it the perfect car. Well, the first thing most people do is they put wheels and tires on it. You may want big tires on the back, skinny tires on the front. You may want a pro street style. You may want pro touring, and you may want factory stock. But the kind of wheels and tires you put on your car pretty much gives the car the whole theme, and you kind of build it around that. Well, you can put some wheels on there that are relatively inexpensive. These Vision uh, Sport Star wheels, I think, it's what I've got on Frankenova. They look really good. They're cast aluminum, so they're not as expensive as a forged aluminum wheel, but they're pretty good looking wheel. Um, you can do something like that. You can do some steel wheels. You can do a factory style rally. You can do all kinds of things. But really, wheels and tires are the first big modification anyone makes to a car when they get it. Kind of, even if they bought a car that they liked, they might not like the wheel and tire package, so they change that up first. So my first thing that I suggest, if you, if you want to make the car yours, want to make it a little more fun to drive, put your wheels and tires on it. Now, if you're using factory style tires or the car you buy has factory style wheels and tires on there, upgrading to a bigger tire can be a huge benefit. It'll handle a little bit better, a little stiffer sidewall on the tire, stuff like that. A little bit bigger tire, it might ride a little better. Um, of course, you put some low profile tires on there, it might ride a little rougher, but either way, it's gonna change your ride. The handling will definitely change the stiffer the sidewall is. And if you're using old bias ply, if you buy a stock, uh, stock tire car, really no one's really using bias ply tires anymore unless it's a restoration, but they're still out there. And they have radials that look like bias plies. But for the most part, a wheel and tire package can really change the look of the car, and it'll definitely change the feel of the car if you make a big change. Now the second thing you really need to do, and this is all over the car, bushings. Whether it's your control arm bushings, your body bushings, your leaf spring bushings, or whatever, Bushings make a giant difference. If the car has any age to it all, unless it's already been done, the bushings are probably junk. Now, a factory control arm bushing, it might look okay, um, and then it's really got a lot of slop in it, you really can't tell. Also, they might look terrible with big chunks falling out of them. It might be really obvious. Some of them are dry rotted, they're cracked a little bit, but they look like they're in okay condition. Once you upgrade those or put, put new bushings in it, even stock style ones, it's gonna make a giant difference in the handling. Body bushings. Your body bushings, you can buy a kit like I've got here. Um, you can change these and it'll change a lot of things on there. The subframe bushings are usually completely squashed and wore out. Your fenders don't fit right. Um, trying to align your fenders and, and doors and all that stuff, your hood, with worn out bushings on the body bushing with the subframe mounts and the radiator support can be a real chore because it's not where it needs to be. So you can't get your fenders and all that stuff where they need to be. Now. The body bushing kits, there is one caveat to that. When you've got a 68 to 72 Nova, you can buy a new body bushing kit, and that's not a big deal. 73, 74 guys, the body bushings were actually taller at the firewall position. Now, 68 to 72, they used a half inch spacer, roughly a half inch. Um, they used this in the bushings at the firewall. Now, 73, 74 Novas, they actually used a taller bushing and did away with the spacer. So if you buy a kit, it's going to be for a 68 to 72, you're gonna to have to add the spacer if you're putting it on a 73, 74. Now I did buy some factory style tall bushings. Classic Industries is the only people I know that sell the correct ones. Um, they might be available somewhere else, I just haven't found them. But bushings on your body bushings will make a giant difference. Um, and then when you go to your control arms, there's all kinds of things you can do as far as bushings. Um, now these are a set I built with Global West offset shafts. Uh, it's a much better shaft. It's offset a little bit. It gives you a little bit more alignment capability and it's got new stock style bushings in it. Well, the bushings, like I said, make a big difference. They're not that hard to change. I've got a video on changing some. Not a great video, but it's okay. It gives you the idea of what it takes. Um, but the control arm bushings will set your alignment, keep it from moving around. Um, it'll stiffen up, the, even stock ones, will stiffen up your suspension a little bit. And if you want to, you can go with the polyurethane bushings, like I've got here for the body bushings. Now, the polyurethane bushings, they do have a tendency to squeak. They do make some expensive ones that are supposed to be guaranteed not to squeak, but the polyurethane ones, you gotta put lube and grease and stuff like that on them when you put them in, there's a good chance they'll end up squeaking. 
Um, lower control arm bushings are the same thing. While we're talking about suspension, another thing you can do, if you don't want to go through the trouble of paying someone to change your control arm bushings and your ball joints, well, the other thing you can do is replace the control arms themselves. Upper and lower tubular control arms make a giant difference. One thing they do is they also build in, usually, more caster. So that gives you a little bit better stability at a higher speed, um, gives you more adjustability in your control arms, and they're just stronger and they look a lot cooler. And speaking of suspension and bushings, shocks. One of these is obviously bad, the other one's not. Now, you could buy a car. Really, sometimes it's really easy to tell if the shocks are bad, sometimes it's not. So if you've got any doubt about it, put some new shocks on there. And up to a point, put the nicest shocks you can afford on there. It really does make a difference. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy a really expensive set of shocks, but generally speaking, the better shock you put on there, the better it's gonna do its job for the most part. Now, if you've got a complete, everything else is completely stock, then a super high dollar shock is not going to make that big a difference. But if you put a cheap shock on some all brand new hardware, uh, you'll notice the difference between that and an expensive shock. Now we can't talk about suspension without talking about springs. Your front coil springs change the ride height of your car, they change the stiffness, they change how it handles, they change a, a, a bunch of things that can make a big difference in how much you enjoy your ride. Now this is a BMR two inch lowering spring. This is a stock style small block V8 spring. Um, these set my car up, I had these in there, they set the car up just too high. They just really did, I didn't like it. Uh, they never settled. They were the same for two years. They didn't move an inch, I like half an inch. They, they had the front end of the car up too high. Um, and then I went to these. Well, the problem was, uh, I went to these at the same time I changed to a BMR lower control arm, well, all four arms. And the problem is the aftermarket style control arms, the ones that I've got on my 73 now, did not have the depression for the spring in them. They were just flat on the bottom. The problem with that was the car set right, I liked the way it set, but then the spring would do this because the bottom was flat like this table and the spring wasn't because the spring is uneven. So um, make sure you get a spring and a control arm that are compatible together, but definitely changing your front springs or going to a coilover shock would make a big difference. Now they make a coilover shock like I've done on Frank and Nova or on my 73 that will fit a stock control arm. However, I'm using tubular control arms on both of them. I'm not sure I trust them on the stock control arms, but they do make them. And they give you a little bit of adjustment in your height. Usually a coilover shock on the front is adjustable, which you can fine tune it for different styles of driving. And while we're on the subject of springs, Chevrolet Novas came with all kinds of different leaf springs. They came with monoleaf, they came in multi-leaf, and the multi-leaf came in different sizes. Now a lot of guys like the monoleaf, a lot of guys want the higher lift on the rear end, so they go to a multi-leaf, and they give different shackles you can put on there to make that a little bit better. Now, if you're going to put multi-leaf on there, um, make sure you don't get something too stiff, or it's going to be an uncomfortable ride. If you put monoleaf on there, make sure you don't get something that's not uh, stiff enough, and the car sags in the back, because your spring will determine your ride height on the back. You can buy lowering springs, you can buy stock height springs, and you can buy lift springs. Uh, but the biggest thing is try to get something that matches the style of driving you're going to use the car for. So while we're talking about springs, one of the biggest things that makes a giant change in the way your car looks is the stance. Whether you're lowering it or raising the back end up to give it a little bit of that old school look. Now you can put springs on there like I was talking about. Front springs that are lowering, rear springs that are lowering. You can put taller front springs on or lifting rear leaf springs on and that changes the ride height of your car. To get it where you want it, you might have to figure out, might have to ask some questions, ask a whole bunch of other people, hey, what have they got? But you really want the springs to match the style of driving that you're doing. As soon as you go one way real far, either really low or really high up, it's gonna change a lot of things. Suspension geometry, uh, shock lengths, all that stuff will have to be adjusted to match your ride height of your car. But it can make a giant difference in how the car looks. So you've got your wheels and tires on, you got your suspension where you want it, you got some good shocks on there. You've got it raised or lowered how you like it with springs that, you, that match what you're doing with your car. Well, what about your brakes? Now, most of these cars, it seems like, came with drum brakes all the way around. That's not terrible. They're adequate. They work. I've even raced, you know, with drum brakes before, and they're not completely scary, but they do leave a little bit to be desired. Uh, drum brakes tend to pull to one side or other unless you've got them adjusted correctly, and sometimes that can be a pain. You can deal with brake fade if you get your brakes real hot or if you're using them too much going in up some hills and down some hills. Um, so drum brakes can be a little bit scary, plus disc brakes are just cooler and they stop better. 
Now, disc brake swap for the front is a very, very common thing. There's dozens of kits out there um, in all kinds of levels from just a wheel kit to a complete kit that's got four wheel disc on all four corners. So that's a big upgrade. Now, most people would benefit greatly from just changing the front to disc. It'll stop better, water doesn't affect it, uh, brake fade could be a thing, but it's really mostly eliminated compared to drum brakes. It's, it's you know, non-existent. So a disc brake upgrade on the front is a giant mod for most guys. It gives you a lot more stopping power. Um, it looks cooler, to be honest with you, when you can see them through the wheel. And it just, you know, it's just a better and safer option. Now, for any of you that have ever owned an old car, you have one now. One of the things on it that is usually hacked up when you get it or before you get it, or even sometimes after you get it because you did a little hack and trying to put a radio in it, is the wiring harness. Now, I've bought all kinds of factory Novas that had great wiring harnesses in them, but most of them, at some point, somewhere in the harness, it was butchered, either for a fan or a radio or an amp or, you know, something went bad and they bypassed it. I mean, that, that four-door's got lamp cord in it running stuff. I mean, it's terrible. You can buy an aftermarket wiring harness, fairly inexpensive. I got this one right here off Amazon. Um, it is a, not a direct replacement, it is a universal harness, but it gives a upgraded fuse instead of the glass fuses, it's got the plastic fuses. Um, it's got plenty of wire to run that stuff wherever you want. The instructions, well, they're not great, but it does come with instructions. So if you buy a factory style kit from like American Auto Wire, Painless, or a couple of the others, they make a factory style wiring harness that plug and play it fits better, it mounts better, and all that stuff. They're a lot more expensive than something like this, which is a couple of hundred bucks. But a wiring harness might save your car because a lot of fires happen. The factory wiring harness uh, left a lot to be desired. The old fuses, add-ons, stuff that you don't know about, rodents chewing on it, a lot of that can cause a lot of problems and your car will burn to the ground if you're not careful. So a lot of times a good upgrade on your car is a wiring harness. Okay, so now you've upgraded the brakes. The car stops better, it's much safer. All right, you've changed your bushings, you've changed your shocks. You might have lowered it with some lowering springs, put some coilover shocks in it or whatever, new wheels and tires. The car looks cool, it's got a good stance, it stops better, it's much more fun to drive. What next? Well, one of the best things you can do to your car to make it more fun to drive is put a performance ring and pinion in it. Now, you can change to a gear. Now, numerically higher is a shorter gear and numerically lower is a taller gear. It takes a minute to get your head wrapped around, but it makes sense. Now, if you've got like a 276 gear or a 308 gear, a 323 or a 342 or even a 373 will make a giant difference in stoplight to stoplight performance or drag racing or any of that kind of thing. Now, it will up your RPMs on the highway, but it'll make driving around town a lot more fun. Uh, putting a positive unit in it is also a big thing, especially for burnouts and traction. So if you want to do a bunch of cool burnouts, a one-wheel peel isn't that cool. Um, you know, I, I've done plenty of one-tire fry and burnouts, and they're, they're fun when you, that's all you have, but if you have two tires burning up, that's much, much better. Now, a pause unit and a gear makes a giant difference in performance. Um, whether you've got an 8.2, an 8.5, or a 12 bolt, it's a, it's a big upgrade. It's, it's a fairly expensive upgrade. You know, it's along the lines of, of your disc brake upgrade. You know, you can spend a thousand or so on a disc brake upgrade if you're paying someone to do it, uh, depending on which kit you buy. And on a rear gear swap, you're going to spend a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks if you add a posi unit, depending on who, who's doing it. A lot of the stuff you can do it yourself. I did all mine myself. I've got videos. Y'all can check those out. Uh, look on my page and look at the other videos. But, you know, a gear and a posi makes a giant difference in performance. Now, the other stuff made a giant difference in handling and all that. This actually feels different while you're accelerating. So if you get the right combination. Okay, so I could go on and on and on all these different modifications that you might want to do to your car. Now you might have all these already. You might have bought a finished car and you like it the way it is. But a lot of you guys, if you're like me, you're buying beat up junk, you're working on it yourself. Um, it's either stock or incomplete or not running when you get it. And you wanna make a bunch of changes. And the biggest thing you do is figure out what you're going to do because a lot of people they get pulled in different directions they want to build this style car they want to build this style car they can't make up their mind well only you can do that that's that's your personal uh, extension of your style is your car now your chevy nova may look great as a pro street car may look great as a pro touring car somewhere in between the old school look completely stock look however you want it but you want to have more fun while you drive it the the look of it is one thing but the way it handles when you're in it 
you don't want it to be a miserable experience. Get out and drive your car, but make it as safe and as comfortable and enjoyable as you can. See you guys next video.